This episode is sponsored by Raycon. Get 15% off your new earbuds today at buyraycon.com slash middle eight. Somebody that I used to know is the greatest one hit wonder of the 2010s. Eight years ago, the single sat on the throne of the Billboard Hot 100 for eight straight weeks, eventually reaching number one in 18 countries around the world. It became the first song to sell more than 5 million copies in the first half of a year, certifying the single platinum countless times over and at at least 12 major markets. Three ARIA awards, two Grammys, and one billion views and counting on YouTube. At the end of the decade, the track placed eighth on Billboard's Hot 100 songs of the 2010s, and second on Triple J's Hottest 100 of the decade. Somebody that I used to know remains Gautier's biggest and most successful hit, managing to captivate the world with its global sounds, its anti-pop structure, and an enthralling emotional love story. But the Belgian-Australian artist has yet to follow up his 2011 release, leaving us to ask, what happened to Gautier? This is how Gautier crafted a song we all used to know. The danger with having a massive hit is that the song has the chance to transcend your whole identity. From an outsider's perspective, it might have seemed as if Gautier arrived out of nowhere. But by somebody that I used to know's release, he had already received national acclaim for his previous two album releases. Wally DeBacker, better known as Gautier, had a strong desire to make music from an early age. He learned to play the piano, then the drums, and it wasn't long before DeBacker was sampling old records and constructing tracks of his own. When DeBacker met Chris Schroeder in 2002, they formed the rock band The Basics, a group he's continued to tour and record alongside his solo project. DeBacker managed to finally put together a collection of tracks for his 2003 solo debut, Boardface. A few short years later, Gautier released Like Drawing Blood, featuring more acoustic instrumentation than his debut. You don't gotta keep the man down for you to get up. There's no need to worry. The excellent art pop record won Triple J's listener poll for Best Album of the Year, garnering him his first ARIA award for Best Male Artist, and went on to win iTunes Album of the Year in the UK. His achievements allowed him to set up a permanent recording studio in a barn at his parents' farm, where he'd begin recording his third album, Making Mirrors featuring his signature hit. But what was it that made the track so special? Some of it had to do with the sounds Gautier uses. Born in Belgium, raised in Australia, Gautier tends to look abroad for musical ideas, a core reason for the song's global appeal, and why it might have done well on both alternative and contemporary stations. The track heavily samples Brazilian jazz musician Luiz Bonfa's Seville. giving it a very Latin-inspired loop from just two repeated notes. The drums are another beast of their own. Primal in nature, they feature Afro-Cuban bongos and South American tango influences. The earwormy melody sounds like it was composed on a xylophone or a glockenspiel. and sounds fairly reminiscent of the nursery rhymes from our childhoods. Lullabies we've heard our entire lives, subconsciously soothing or calming us and making this track instantly recognizable. But it also does something peculiar when it comes to song structure. Typical top 40 song structure aims to get the song's chorus to your ears as quickly as possible, occasionally beginning with a hook right out of the gate. Instead, Gautier gives us two full verses before finally reaching the refrain. By doing this, the song forces us to wait while it builds towards its climactic payoff, and we're willingly tolerant, since we've already been losing ourselves in its Latin sounds and nursery rhyme melody. But like nursery rhymes, we wouldn't be as captivated if it weren't for the single story. That back-and-forth ping-pong pattern of Luis Bonfa's sample left a backer thinking about the back-and-forth within relationships. Incorporating elements of fiction and real-life experience, the song became his forum for reflecting on the aftermath of a past breakup. Now and then I think of when we were together. His partner seemed happy, and he told himself, 
that he should be too. But inside, he's unsure of something, not feeling a sort of warmth he's craving. Told myself that you were right for me, but felt so lonely in your company. Rather than leaving, he grows comfortable to this misery. Eventually, the two have a falling out, opting for a chance at friendship. And at first, he's kind of relieved it's over. But his tone changes when she decides to cut him off completely. And I don't even need your love, but you treat me like a stranger and that feels so rough. He couldn't stand to be with her, but ironically doesn't want to lose her entirely either. He feels she was taken away from him unfairly and slowly convinces himself that he doesn't need her or her methods. I guess that I don't need that though. Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Time passes, the two grow distant, and have become strangers once again. We've all been there. We all have that somebody that we used to know. Strangers who became friends, friends who became lovers, and lovers who turned back into strangers. The song touches on such a universal emotion. But there's also a twist. Gautier had gotten this far in writing the track, but felt it was missing something. That's when the idea to introduce another perspective emerged. He wanted the song to be a duet, but structured like a dialogue offering the somebody he used to know a chance to counter his argument. It was just a matter of who would be the right female vocalist to complete the tune. Finding someone he thought would bring the track to life became a heartbreaking process in itself. He had a high-profile Australian artist cancel on him at the last minute. He had his girlfriend Tash Parker make an attempt, but they felt her vocals didn't work for the tune. Gautier had almost convinced himself that the song wasn't meant to be, until he finally lucked out with Kimbra six months later. The New Zealander struck the right balance between the fragile and direct emotion needed for the track. Now and then I think of all the times you screwed me over. Her voice contradicts the narrative laid out by Gautier up to that point, making him appear as an unreliable narrator. But in me believing it was always something that I'd done. His inner turmoil during their relationship affected her more than we were led to believe. Their breakup left her realizing she didn't need that sort of treatment either. She concludes her rebuttal by throwing his own words back at him. Said that you could let it go and I wouldn't catch you hung up on somebody that you used to know. Leading us to believe that this isn't the first time he's been hung up on someone he used to love. Maybe his refusal to move on from a past relationship ruined this new one. Either way, they've both come to the end of their time together and are just wrestling with their unresolved feelings. Neither side is really in the wrong. And that conversational aspect is my favorite part, because everyone picks a side and hears the track in their own way. It becomes our song, because we develop such a deep and direct connection with it. That's the beauty of art. With the track complete, Gautier released the single in the summer of 2011, with the iconic music video following shortly after. Countless remixes and remakes surfaced, along with a number of televised performances, aiding in the single's meteoric rise. The song took on a life of its own, taking Gautier along with it. So what happened to Gautier, and why hasn't he capitalized on his success? The single in his album Making Mirrors saw him tour the world, and when things finally quieted down, Debacher said that there would be no new Gautier music, but that the project may continue in the future. Additionally, money has never been a driving motivator for the artist. He isn't even interested in selling his music. When the track found itself in some legal troubles due to Luis Bonfa's sample, Gautier refused to waste his time going to court and settled on losing 50% of the track's royalties. He doesn't monetize his YouTube channel, and he refuses to sell his music for commercials, but encourages artists to use the song free of charge for remixes and independent film soundtracks. When he won Aria's Australian Artist of the Decade in early 2020, he announced that a follow-up album would be released in the next decade. Probably. Performing as an occasional vocal feature, DeBacker largely remains the active drummer and singer of his band, The Basics. Somebody that I used to know was the perfect hit for a transitional moment in pop. Gautier took the world by storm with his fresh sound, unique song structure, and relatable narrative. Crafting a song we all used to know, and one we won't soon forget. Gautier's song isn't the only thing we used to know. Remember wired headphones? If you're still using these relics, now's the time to cut them off and make out like they never happened. Wireless earbuds will change your music listening experience. I don't have to untangle any cords, I can listen in bed without the worry of strangling myself to death, and I can work out or do chores without being tethered to my phone. 
at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds? Raycon's everyday E25s are the ideal upgrade. Seamless Bluetooth pairing, a noise isolating fit that stays in your ears, six hours of playtime, a charging case that fits in the little pocket of your jeans, a variety of colorways to choose from, IPX4 water resistant, but most importantly, great sound. Don't get caught up on some wires that you used to know. Click the link in the description and get 15% off your order today. It's a great deal, but it also shows Raycon that I sent you over, which is a huge help to my channel. Upgrade, or get your first pair of truly wireless earbuds using the first link in the description below. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like rating. If you loved it, share it with a friend, subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell so you're notified of when the next episode goes live. If you can, support us on Patreon and follow us at More Middle 8. Tell me. Who do you think the high-profile Australian artist was that dropped out of Gautier's massive hit? My guess is Sia. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's it for me. Again, thanks for watching, and keep listening.